Hello time travelers! In this video I'm going to be building the guitar pedal kit from Stumac called the Sun Fuzz and it's a clone of the Analog Man Sun Face which was inspired by a pedal used by Jimi Hendrix called the Fuzz Face. Here it is on Stumac's website as of December 29th 2022. This is how much they were charging for it and you might see why I'm, I use that instead of buying one of these from Analog Man. Because the base price is 195 and then you add features to it, it goes up from there. But, but literally, he has like a billion features. Look at all these things. And what I hear is that the staff is really, really communicative and supportive. So if you want a particular sound, they could help you out. But the main reason I do this is because I like to modify my kits. But in this video, it's just a basic building of the pedal so you can use this as a basic walkthrough for building any guitar pedal you know to get the basics down I keep saying basic whatever and why I, I chose this pedal for that purpose is because it's fairly simple there's not a lot to do on the circuit you check this out here's the PCB it's not too much going on on there here's the instructions that come with the kit and they're really good too good in my opinion I mean you could have saved us a few bucks by just having a basic printer print out because my 4k webcam blows it out i'm going to be using obs to record me reading the pbf pbf the pdf on the website sometimes i feel like i have brain damage you can laugh at me that's fine i can take it but i keep saying the wrong stuff hey it's future me and turns out that i had a nasty head cold i'm reading what i wrote down because i can't think straight starting like the day before i filmed this video and I didn't have any other symptoms until a couple days later. So in this video, there's more jump cuts than normal because I kept saying stuff wrong. And it took me three hours for me to do the build, even though I think it would have taken less for me because I have experience with building circuits. The instructions talks about some different kind of tools, but you'll be seeing me use tools, basically the equivalent of all this stuff. Parts list, blah, blah, blah. So how do we get started? Here's a chart about how to read resistors, but I just use a voltmeter because I can never figure those colors out. Capacitors, diodes. Instructions even have a picture of integrated circuits right here. There's no integrated circuit on this build and if you need to know how to install one of those click the card up here for how I built another kit from Stumac called the Two Kings which is a clone of Analog Man's King of Tone and I have the video chapter so you can go straight to the part about integrated circuits. Install one diode and two resistors. There's a diode. Let's see. It says on it 1N517. Wondering if this camera could pick that up. Probably not. Note the little line means one side of the diode. So you want to put it in the same direction. Here's a tool that I bought recently just for doing stuff like this. I'll put a link in the descriptables. It's designed just for bending over the legs on components. I'm going to be needing it a lot on transistors when I'm experimenting and using different ones. That's a future video, by the way. Good. So that goes right through. Flip it over, spread the legs out so it doesn't fall, and have a way to hold it while you solder it. I just use a regular old helping hands thing. A link to this is in the descriptables as well. It's a soldering iron that I got off of Amazon. Now this it's still not warming up. So I'm going to grab this flux that I got with the soldering iron. Stick the tip in. Don't breathe the gases. I should use an exhaust fan if I do a bunch of soldering, but I don't have one of those yet. I just typically blow it away from me. There we go. These are side cutters. I'll put a link in the descriptables for those too. Script of what's it's sorry um, because I have a cold I s thought things that I didn't say out loud that I normally would have in the video and I moved the circuit outside of frame of the camera a, a few times after you put the solder on you use these I used to call them side cutters but they're called flush cutters because they cut flush to it you cut the legs off and then you touch the tip of what's left of the leg to make the solder and go into like a Hershey's Kiss shape. Now I come back and I hit them again because I want a little Hershey's Kiss shape right there. I keep wanting to do a pokey thing. I don't want a pokey thing. Cool down. 
So I'm busting out my big box of transistors. That's not something I'm working on in this video, but in a future video, I'm gonna be trying different transistors on this pedal. But I am going to put in the sockets so that I could swap out transistors later. And that's these two spots right here. And Stumac has this little leg or whatever it's called sticking out so you know which direction to put things. But in this case, if you're just going to use the BC108 transistors that come with it, you want to make sure that the legs are perfectly straight and be super careful. These are called new old stock, which means they don't make them anymore. And you put it in the same way as the little thing indicates, the little line right there. But in this case, I want to put in sockets, which don't look like they're going to quite fit. Like they're too big. So maybe if I used this thingy, what's it? And bent these legs a tiny bit. Well, that took a little bit of finagling and trying. Um, it's not quite flush in there, but it'll do. That'll do, piggy. That'll do. The legs are barely sticking through. Stop trying to gas me. So how the transistor would go into one of these is you just put it in and leave it there while you're testing. But I'm gonna set those aside for now. And now resistors. And I need my voltmeter. And I don't see it. Maybe I put it in the black hole room. I don't know why I put stuff in here sometimes. Dang it, it's, it's not, not in here. In here. Maybe, I left, it Maybe I left it upstairs. All right, got my uh, voltmeter here. And you can use the resistors that come with the kit. I'm sure they're good, but these are metal film resistors. And I noticed on my other kit that I built on the, this, the Two Kings, which is a clone of Analog Man's King of Tone, he used carbon film resistors. So I made sure I bought some of those. In this case, I found an image of the circuit of the Sun Fuzz, and he uses carbon composite resistors. Fortunately, Stumac sells these separately. I just had to order them individually for each kind. That's what these are. I'm gonna get these out. All right, metal film resistors are actually the best in terms of within tolerance of the specifications. But some of the other resistor types will blend to more of a warmer tone in a guitar pedal circuit, which is why I'm using the, the carbon composite ones on this pedal. All right, instructions. Which one's the first one? This green one, 100K resistor. That's this one. And it's brown, black, black, orange, brown. Brown, black, yellow, whatever. See, it's not even the same colors. Let's see if it's actually 100K. Set the voltmeter to something bigger. So 200K. And that's 100K. That's 104K, but what else? And that's the middle one of these three. It even says 100K right there. And I'm just bending it over. I'm not using this tool. I really got that just for transistors. This is going to be uh, fun. This resistor is longer than this socket. Honestly, this would be a lot easier to do with the resistors that it came with because they're tiny. Now, this is the shape I'm trying to get it to go down like that. Let's see. Yeah, that's much better. I went into this thinking I was making a short video, but here I am putting these non-standard resistors on because I want a better sound. Well, that's what the back of the PCB looks like with those in there. And I'm going to finish up these resistors and then move on to capacitors. A 22 microfarads, a one microfarad on a 47. So here's the 47, that's the 22, and you can see because the writing is on it right there, and then a one. And these are all polarized. This is a capacitor as well, and it's not polarized. But that means you have to put it in a certain way. And this diagram has this little gray bar pointed in a certain direction. If I remember correctly, the gray bar is the negative. And on here, it says 22U. That's the symbol for micro. Negative goes down, so it's right. So these, you just push straight through and bend the legs like so. This might look daunting with all these 
capacitor legs sticking out and I'm trying to get between them to solder. <laughs> this is such an easy kit to build in my opinion. So few parts. It's also like the fundamental of a fuzz pedal is pretty much the same from one circuit to another. You just change one or two things and it sounds wildly different or just slightly different. And that's why I love fuzz pedals so much. The solder on that particular leg is getting a little, built, a little bit crazy, so I'm gonna use this solder sucker thing. And how you use it is like that, and it spits out the last solder you sucked out. Toss. You heat up the solder. Now that this is compressed, and you release it with that, and it sucks it back in to this thing. Like that. And it goes so fast, you don't even see the solder get sucked in. Now I'm gonna be really careful not to do that again by leaving my soldering iron there for like 10 seconds and then touch it so that some of the solder goes on there and then pull it away real fast. And it doesn't have to be super perfect because I'm about to cut it off and I could touch it with the soldering iron again to make it better. You see I'm putting all the, what are these called? Leads in a pile in case you need to fix something or use it to mod something. You're gonna need some of those. I'm touching that, this particular one I just took all the solder off of it. Oops. Get back on there, solder. Stop being a commie. I think the soldering iron tip is dirty, so this is how I clean it. The flux and then the brass wool. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you see in the instructions, this capacitor is not polarized. Now typically, you would want to put it in a certain direction where you can see the part number from outside in case you were troubleshooting or something later on. In my case, it's not going to matter much because of these giant resistors. But if you're using the stock resistors, it would be this way with the letters facing that direction. If I can get, even get this thing in there. <laughs> It's like shoving up against the resistors. Ah, I got it in. See, it's in there. Before we move on to the next thing, I do want to point out something about this circuit. One of these capacitors is for filtering the input. What I heard was, was that's what Analog Man changed from the original fuzz face circuit. If I go in the instructions and I scroll down so I can figure out where the input and output jacks go, and then follow that to which capacitor. It will tell you which capacitor you want to experiment with on here. It looks like these wires are for input because when you flip it, it's like that. And the input's on the right. And that right there says ground and that says plus. And then you've got this diode that goes over here. It's this 47 UF one, this blue one. So if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. Now here's the trim pots right here. I'm actually skipping this part just for a little bit because I'm thinking of having external controls for these if possible. So I'm going to move on to the next step. The kit comes with wire, it says. I also have this other wire, which is solid core 22 gauge. If you wanna find some on Amazon or wherever. Using the correct 22 on your wire stripper, cut the wire into eight two and a half inch sections. I don't have a a measure device. Wait, do I have a caliper? Yes, I have my Dekirich. Dekirich! You're gonna want to click the link in the descriptor what's it's. And I'll show you why. Because it actually has inches. Zero that out, and then hit that, and now it's in inches, and I want two and a half. Now, Stumac typically provides just enough wire for you to use, so you don't want to cut them longer than the two and a half. Like I did in my previous video with the other kit from them. I ran out of wire, but luckily I had this. This time I'm gonna color code my wire. Come on, be straight so I can measure you. Germany, Christmas. Four. Couple red ones. And a purple one. And an orange one, I guess. This is all 22 gauge solid core wire I found on Amazon a long time ago. I've shown this trick to other people, even people that have done a lot of work have 
with electronics and they never seen this before, but you grab one end of the wire with pliers and then you find your correct gauge stripper. In this case, the 22 is the smallest one. And you do that, flip it over to the other side. Easy peasy. Give to me. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now I'm gonna bring it up to this camera so you can see why I get solid core wires. Focus, can you focus on this? Here, focus on my hand. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. But this braided wire, you have to twist by spinning it around on your fingers so that it won't spread out when it goes through the circuit board. These are a pain because you can't do a bunch at once and you gotta hold it like this. This I've never figured out how to do without putting the solder in my mouth. Uh. These braided wires from Stumac are, seem to be pretty nice. They're not spreading apart when I put them through the PCB. I'm gonna show you a little bit more about these braided wire ones. After you trim off the excess, it's just like some components, you have to inspect it to make sure there's enough solder to actually have a good contact there. You may need to touch it up. All right, Stu Mac, I've got your eight wires. What's next? Now we're going to attach the breakout board to the PCB. Where are you, breakout board? You're in this scene. In ground, switch out. So all four of those go into that. Okay, fine. Now, I can't, this braided wire doesn't want to go through. There we go. Uh, that gives me anxiety. It's almost as bad as talking to humans. Now you see these two holes? One and two. It says right here, I have to cut four inch pieces of the remaining wire. I don't want to use the remaining wire. I want to use yellow and white for some reason. Now you can get away without having a wire stripper if you're only ever going to build one guitar pedal. If you're ever going to do more than one project, get wire strippers. Your scissors will quickly get little notches in it and not cut anymore. And you'll mess up every now and then, have to fix it. And then sometimes your wire will be too short. That was my life a long time ago when I started building things. Now here's the part where you put all the pots into the enclosure. And then put this on it and solder it down. So it says fuzz, B1K, volume 250K, and tone 25K. I just need the pots bag of things. 1K goes right there. And it's written right here on the pot. 250K goes right here. And the 5K tone goes right here. And it says if there's an index pin protruding from it to break it off. But no, they've included, oh, there, there are some right here. This is when the time you have to cut a little hole in the enclosure so that it won't rotate around. But since it's gonna be soldered into the PCB, PCB is gonna keep it from rotating around. I'm gonna use this tool that I got for other stuff. Oh, that's easy. Come off anti-rotation pin. You're not in this scene. Like later on, if I mod this pedal with extra knobs, I'm gonna need these on those other knobs because they won't be mounted to the PCB. Now notice this part. So this is an improvement over the other kit I built, which is the King of Tone clone. Before mounting a tone pot to the circuit board, place one section of the included double foam adhesive tape squares on the back of the tone pot to insulate it from the circuit board, basically. And they give you four, and you only have three pots. The other one didn't have enough to do all the pots, and then I figured out, based off of where the circuit was, I only needed two pieces. But the improvement on this one is that it shows me which one it needs, I need to put it on. Now, this was difficult for me to get this paper off of it. So using the knife to get in between the foam and the paper to peel it. Now, I should have done this. <laughs> Taking these nuts off to hold them down. Ips, I'm just screwing them down. I dropped one. No. Note to you, don't be like me. Do this over the table, not over your lap, because then you'll lose one if you do it over your lap. All right, where'd you go, nut? I didn't even hear it. 
go clinkety clank on the floor or anything. Ah! Ah! Come here, a giant bag of pots that I have for some reason. I'm stealing a nut. And I'm putting the nut on the foot switch as well to hold it still. That makes this part super easy. Just inspect to make sure you have all three of each pot going through, all the way through to the other side like that. Push your finger down the middle to push it so it goes down all the way. And apply your solder. Now these pots got thicker leads than other components, so they take a little bit more solder. And now for the foot switch. Mm. Looks like I have to bend these wires around. And just like the pots, these take lots of solder. So I've already got those four done. Watch me do this one. Hold this for a little bit. And what that's doing is getting that little lug hot. And then when I touch with the solder, I give it a bunch. And I move it around with the soldering iron until it covers the whole thing. And that's about it. Now maybe you can see it, but where I put that foam is between that pot and the circuit board so they don't touch and ground out. Which would be bad! Your circuit wouldn't work properly that way. Now we're doing the LED and the negative side has a shorter leg, but in cases where the legs are cut off because of whatever reason, maybe you're reusing an old LED, how you can tell, I think it's called the anode, I'm not sure, but the bigger part inside of the LED is the negative side and the smaller part's the positive. Now looking at this, it says A and K, so anode and cathode. Looking at the instructions, they're putting the LED into the case first, but going back up a page, it says right here in this section, I have to remove all this from the enclosure. Just thinking about this, how am I gonna get that in there with all that in the way? Duh. I got this set of rocket sockets. I can't remember what website I got it from, but when I find it, I'll put the link in the description box thingy. This makes stuff like this super easy. You could just use your fingers or if you're only doing one, you can use a pair of pliers. If you're doing more than one pedal, save your time. Get a set of rocket sockets. There we go, that's the right size. So I need the LED. If you look, there's the case and it's nut, washer, and then collar. Oh, it's a lock washer, I see. And it goes right here in the middle. Thumb or finger. Stay in the hole! That's your home. Oh, why didn't you just go home? That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Hold that over. Dang it. I'm not being that good at this. Then lock washer and then nut. That's a flat side and a curved side. I want flat side down. Flat side is on the left. Can you see it with that camera? I'm curious. Thank you, rocket sockets. I don't see any instructions where I use this plastic thingy. Oh, that's right here and it goes this way. There's two holes in it. Okay. Whatevs. Tossed. It goes like that. And then these, these have to be bent over and pushed through to be soldered. What? That's like awkward as all get out. Hello, editing me here. I realized that I couldn't do the LED until I did my mod on the trim pots. You'll see later how I bent the LED legs with those tiny pliers that I used earlier in the video. And I've got other pots for modifying this thing, if it's possible. Spoilers, it is. I got this 5K pot and it already has a plastic cover on it from Alpha. I especially want the 5K one because that's the bias. Cause some of Analog Man's Sun Fuzz pedals have that option with a, another knob right here. What, what if I could fit it over here? I bought mine with a plastic cover on it and I might be regretting that because the foam pad might be better for getting it onto here. Looks like I got like six millimeters clearance on either side. Come here, Dekai Rich. We're gonna be using you. Now, if you're gonna be using the trim pots that come with it, first, an explanation of what the trim pot does. It's a mini potentiometer that goes inside and you open up the guitar pedal and reach through with a screwdriver and set it play around with your guitar for a while and you set it and forget it and leave it. 
They go in super easy. You got three holes and you've got three pins. Just line it up and push it through. And that's instant regret. <laughs> Cause that pot is in the way. So I, whenever I do, do mine, I have to bend it out of the way and put new foam on it, but that's fine. This isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> the other pot I have is a 50K and I got a few of them. It looks like that, any hoosers. First things first for me is to get all of this lined up to where it fits. And I'm going to use my caliper and I don't need the actual measurement of things. I just need to set it to where it looks like everything will fit. So if I put this like two millimeters away from that one and then set these to the middle, okay? And then tighten this down. Now I need my punch. Just my punch in here and a marker. Come here, marker, here in this scene. Get a piece of paper and I put a mark right here. Like that. Put this in the middle, like so and give it the punch. Where's the punch? I just have the punch. Anyone building your own pedals or whatever, or modifying pedals, I highly recommend getting one of these punches. It makes a little divot spot so that your drill doesn't try to walk away when you're drilling. And go, you know what I'm talking about. And if you know about how to use a step bit, then tell people in the comments, because I have used a step bit. I just can't find mine right now. So you just have to basically work your way up to the size. Come here, drill. Luckily, I already have drilled holes to compare to what size I need to go up to. 930 seconds, Jimmy Christmas. Yeah, those are 930 seconds. I'm gonna start with 330 seconds, I guess. Now 7.30 seconds. It just eyeballed it. It looks like it's about in between. Let's see if it's small enough to, to grab it without walking away. Yep. Nope. Too big. So I had to back it up a little bit. I'll just go slower. It wants to catch, so back it up. Go forward. Toss, 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 toss. I could cut myself doing that, so maybe don't do that. Maybe go to a different work area so you don't get metal bits all over your soldering space. <laughs> now you want to look for burrs. Burrs could cut you later. And I don't really have any. I've got kind of a little bit on the inside, but not enough to cut me in the future. Because if you got burrs, you want to use a rotary tool, like a Dremel, to clean them up. Now you get this taken off. Come off. Come here, rocket socket. Save me. Thank you, rocket socket. You're so amazing. And that's perfect fit in there. A little wobbly. I got the guide pin that I need to cut a hole for. That's why it was wobbly. Now this, if you see when I put it in here, the guide pin is on the right, which is gonna be on the left. See that? And I'm trying to make sure the right side of the caliper is touching the outside of the thread and that the left side of the caliper is touching the middle of the pin. So when I cut a hole, it's in the middle. That looks like where it's gonna be. Putting it in, it's a little too far away from the center shaft. I'm not sure if you can see it there. So I have to make the hole wider in this direction. So I'm going to put this drill bit through and give it some force in that direction. It fits perfectly now. Now you can see how 
the little pin sticks up and when we turn it, it doesn't want to go anywhere. Good. Now let's do the other one. This one's got a guide pin on the bottom. Okay. And before anybody says anything negative about these smaller pots, pots based off their shape and size does not determine the quality. It's the, the, basically the brand and the build quality. When you look at the data sheet or whatever, Oh, first try. Sweet. Now let's just go ahead and rip this off. Pull it back like so. So doing a 50K first, which is this one. And it's this top one. Now it's got three pins and I want to wire this up the same way. So when I adjust it, it's as if I reached inside to adjust it. Then I soldered in three wires for each of the two trim pots into the little holes where the trim pots are supposed to go. But sorry, it was all out of frame, so I just cut it out of the video. All right, three inches. Are you too much or not enough? There's no way it's not enough because look how far it goes. This is gonna go like that. The middle is brown. Oh, this is gonna be kind of tricky. Put the shoulder in my mouth. Here, come here helping hands. Help me with your articulation hand things. You hold that right there. No, not there. Hold it still and steady. Will the helping hands hold the thingy? Hold the thingy, all right. Ow, 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 it's burning my finger. Cause the wire's getting hot, ow. Uh, be a man. Do the dangerous way. When you're on the toilet, read one chapter per dump until you're finished. Be a man. <laughs> yeah, three inches looks like it's just about right. Let's stick another foam pad on here. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. Leave that paper there for now. Oop. Clangity, 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 clang, clang, clang. Uh, not exactly easy. You're thinking, well, just stick it to the PCB, Rob, and then shove it through. Well, then I, I don't, they won't line up. The holes in the case they have to line up with. That's some imagination. Everything goes through. See, look, these look kind of wonky because they have to be pushed into the right position. Like so. This pedal's gonna be sweet. Now I think I can take these papers off because I kind of look, saw where they went on here. We're just kind of hanging over the edge. I'm not pushing it down really hard so that when I push it through, I can adjust it from the other side. Tell you where you're supposed to be. Right there. Now I see I'm forcing it over and it's unsticking it from the PCB. Ah, oh, two of these wires came off. <sighs> Gonna have to fix it in a minute. It's all crooked, but it's good because it's straight enough, I think, to where when I put the nut down, it'll hold it in the right spot. Now I have to fix these two wires because they came off during those shenanigans. Think of it, I should have done this positioning of the pots before I did the wires. That would have been smarter. So that's what that looks like now. Now I actually put it in for permanent with all the washers and nuts and things. I did these three first, which is the stock ones. Now I'm doing these modded ones. All the stock ones hold everything still. And everything, I mean the PCB. Come on, it's not, this one doesn't go through very much. I'll try without the washer. It's not very much thread on this little pot. That's better. If somebody watching this is doing this mod, get the alpha pot for both sides. Don't get one of the smaller ones because there's not much thread on it. I'm going to put my extra washer over here in case I need it for that later. I have it over here to find it. Oh, this is nice. Uh, the foot switch is the same. Just push it through and stick a washer. It has a lock washer. Where's the lock washer go? I'm guessing on the bottom. That's what I'm doing. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. I can never remember where the lock washer goes on things. Oh, now we're doing the LED. Got to solder that in to the board. And the letter A right there is the anode for the positive and the negative goes through the K, which is cathode. And this is gonna be a little bit awkward, I think. So 
So how am I gonna do this? Bend this over. This thingy will help me. Cause I need to do a right angle right at the end. You go into your hole. Reach over there and get in it, cathode. Eh. Are you too good for your home? Answer me! I'm not liking this part, Stumac, but it's okay. I figures it out. <sighs> okay. Now the power jack. I do not like these power jacks that have their little threaded thing on the inside. That means if I want to modify or repair the pedal, I have to desolder that. But I digress. Put that in there. This says minus, and that says plus. And that says plus on the PCB. Good, I color coded them for a reason. I'm twisting this stranded wire, so hopefully it'll go through without spreading apart. Yep. There we go. Now let's pull it back just a tiny bit. That should do. I'll cut some of this excess off. Even bend it back a little bit. Just a tiny bit, like that. There's that. So it comes with two mono jacks. A lot of guitar pedals come with two stereo or one stereo and one mono so that the two sleeve connections come together to tell it to turn the circuit on. But this kit comes with two mono and it's a sleeve, tip lug, sleeve lug, tip. You don't need to worry about the lugs. But they're doing this, the input one first. You notice how I did the power jack. I did it the same way as their picture with a negative on the right and the positive on the left. They probably got a reason why they have it in this orientation here. These holes are not drilled out enough. What? Well, that one is. That one, oh, it's the paint. And I put my drill away and everything. Hold on, this will just take a second. And the drill bit size is 2364. Of course, you could probably use 1132nds, but I'm gonna err on the smaller side. I probably just put a bunch of metal dust all inside my circuit. Oops. It goes in now. And now I see a typo, Stumac. It says add the washer and thread the nut on the shaft enough so that the pot can rotate freely. This is not a pot, it's a jack. This one goes to this wire. That goes to this wire and that one goes to that one. These are prone to not wanting to take solder. Come here, random Allen wrench that I found. We need you to put the globs the boogers, as it were, of flux on here so I can burn it off and blow away smoke so that I don't breed noxious fumes. I'm just gonna hold the side of it there for a minute. I just now realized my mic is dying. I wonder how much of that stuff you could actually hear and if I had to use another mic and clean that up. I will grab another mic. I didn't think this video was gonna take that long. According to their picture, with this oriented this way, that one goes there and that one goes over there. So in my case, black wire goes here and white wire goes on that side because the white wire goes all the way to the foot switch. And they said to make it so that it can spin freely. And this is why, so I can turn it and solder it and then turn it back to the other way. That wasn't so bad. And the other one, when it's upside down, has its wires go. That's gonna be easier. I don't even have to spin it. Probably, we'll see. Congrats on a job well done. Ah, it's been a little over three hours for me. That's why the battery died. Battery on my microphone lasts about three hours. And this is what it looks like. And the only thing I have left is to put these transistors in. Might as well stick them in now. And that's about it for that. <laughs> I would obviously, and you can see them poking up above the top a little bit. Here, this you can see better in this camera, how they poke up above the top. Once I'm done testing, I decide what kind I want. 
I'm going to trim the legs and put them down and solder them into these sockets. My son's going to be here soon and he has to eat supper. So I'm going to go make supper. And either tonight or tomorrow or something, I'm going to come back and do a little bit of tone testing with this pedal and to make sure it works, obviously. I recorded the ending with some of the earlier corrections in the video a few days later, but I forgot to say that is what I did in the video. So here I am saying it in editing. Hey, it's uh, future, future, future me with the guitar. And the cold is almost gone, but I still can't hear it out of my left ear. But I jammed to the pedal. And if you hear any music in the background, it's just a guitar, including the crazy one with, I got a whole pedal chain going on. It sounds like this. Yes, it's using that pedal, the, the pedal we're building right now. Hold on, I'm taking one of my knobs off so I can show you how to put a knob on. Obviously, I bought different kinds of knobs because I want to do custom artwork on here, and this is cool with the color scheme. So you take your pot, you turn it all the way counterclockwise so it's turned all the way down, and you might have to loosen the set screw. You can look inside and see if it's, it's bumping out on the inside, then it means you have to loosen it. Then you point it down to like 7 o'clock, something like that, and you hold it don't push down all the way because then it won't turn because it'll be right up against it so you just hold it and then you tighten it until it gets snug and then you stop don't go any further or you'll bust it then you ah i pushed down now it won't turn i pushed it down too much towards the case or enclosure i mean loosen it a tiny bit lift it tighten it there we go now I have the full range of a knob. And the next thing would probably be to be put stickers on, or maybe you want to put stickers on before doing the knobs, which come in the case, or you might want to do something custom, whatever, that would be cool. Now we're gonna do a little bit of testing. And just FYI, I've got this right here. Volume, fuzz, clean, tone, and bias. Turn this over. I'm gonna make sure my little leg thing is sticking the right way put each one of these in there. Now, FYI, if you are modding these, one of these is the gain transistor and the other one is the fuzz. And I modded one once and I put a different kind on each side. All right, scoosh my chair back. This is a Chinese Squire. Cheapest, most cheapier one you can get. Wilkinson pickups. Volume and tones are all at 10 o'clock. I'm going to be starting in position two, which is the bridge and neck pickup together. And since it's super cheap, the intonation is a tiny bit off. If it sounds like it's out of tune to you, it's not. It's tuned in dadgad. I just got the Shure FM57 mic, trying that out on my 8-inch Marshall combo. The volume and the tones are all at 12 o'clock. Now here's a clean tone. volume drop when I turn it on, but that's how pedals are. You got to set the volume to find unity. Let's turn the volume up just a smidge. Let's turn the volume up just a smidge. Two o'clock for the volume, I think. Let's try that. Let's try turning the fuzz all the way up. You hear that hissing? I think that'll go away if I figure out which one of these resistors is responsible for providing power to the whole pedal. 
and put in a metal film one instead of this carbon composite one. After testing different transistors and doing a lot of knob turning, I think this crackly staticky noise is caused by the extreme ranges of the clean trim pot and the bias trim pot and also turning the fuzz all the way up does it, but only on some of the transistors that I tried because I have a whole box of different transistors that I got, but that's a future video. Let's try a fuzz back down at like three o'clock. Yeah, that's nice. Now, turn the clean all the way up. That's one of your internal trim pots. That's kind of like rolling the volume down, but keeping the volume up, you know? So that would be great if you just want a little bit of dirt from the pedal. Hmm. This could be your gain pedal with that. Sounds sweet. I'm gonna turn it back down 12. Let's actually turn it all the way down so there's no clean and play that same thing again. found my new favorite fuzz pedal. Now let's keep the clean all the way down and turn the tone all the way up. See how much tone that adds. I can't hear out of my left ear because it's freaking cold. Is it adding more high end? Down. Okay, all the way down. All the way up. No, it doesn't add high end. It cuts it. It cuts it when you go all the way down and you get tons of bass. At least that's what I'm hearing. From this ear, even though it's over there. All right, tone at 12 o'clock and try putting the fuzz all the way up. And what that does is it changes the voltage going to one of the transistors. Not fuzz all the way up, the bias all the way up. I can't fix straight. Now turn the bias all the way down. Bias all the way up with chords. Bias all the way down with chords. I could see why clean and bias are set it and forget it knobs for internal, not for messing around on the outside. I'm actually about to film another video with messing around with this pedal. And I've got all my NPN transistors out. So I also have the elusive NK275 PNP transistor. Tell me if you think I should buy another one of these and try to mod it to work with PNP instead of NPN and all that stuff, that'd be sweet. But other than that, subscribe would be awesome because that means I'm going to see you again. I don't like hanging out with my peeps. But likes and comments. Comments are my favorite because I like to talk to people about what they're into in you know, regards to whatever video they're commenting on. So, uh, oh, this head cold. So awkward. Awkward end screen time. Click up here. Uh, uh, over there, that one. If you want to see me do the build of Stu Max clone of the Analog Man King of Tone, it's called Two Kings, click over here for whatever YouTube's algorithm thinks is best for you, and you can, sus and you can subscribe to the channel over there. And I will be seeing you in the comments later. So, bye for now.